Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is the Umma Stands podcast with Shamil and Faraz. Hoping everyone is good today. Alhamdulillah, today is the 21st night. So it could be one of the big, uh, uh, it could be one of the blessed nights of Laylatul Qadr. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal just before we start our podcast to make our podcast a source of ibadat for us as well and a source for us to gain reward, eternal reward for doing some da'wah and for remembering Allah Azza wa Jal throughout this podcast, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, brother Shamil, how are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, good, good. Um, only nine days left, huh? and then we're back to the normal mind. So I hope we can keep uh, the ibadat strong. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Nine days only. Nine days. And, has come and, gone. and we have no guarantee we're going to love to see another one. Subhanallah. And yet, what have we done? Ish. Ish. When you think about it, the Sahaba were conquering lands in the month of Ramadan and we haven't even been able to conquer our own evil habits, eh? Sure. Yeah, deep. <laughs> so deep. <laughs> sure, yes, yes. You know, as deep as it is, it's actually quite a serious matter. Very serious, very, very serious. Subhanallah. And I think that's a good place to start uh, with our topic for the day, inshallah. Subhanallah. Um, so today, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about uh, Musa and Fir'aun. Um, now, on the Ummah stands, we've already talked about uh, certain aspects of the story of Musa alayhi salam, and there is so many to talk, so much to talk about. So we like to focus always on specific occasions and take some lessons from it. And Musa and Fir'aun, Subhanallah, it's a battle that is eternal. You know, it's a battle between truth and falsehood, tyranny and oppression, justice and you know, uh, really persecution evil um, and you know there's the power of government and the power of Allah Azza wa Jal on one side power of the people you know uh, and it's, it's it's really an amazing amazing story um, subhanallah when we talk about Musa alayhi salam you know he's a very uh, in, a very commanding prophet you know you always see him firm strong relying on Allah Azza wa Jal so Musa alayhi salam when he goes to Musa, uh, to Fir'aun you know Fir'aun is in his palace we we can't understand this. It's almost like somebody going into modern day parliaments and questioning the president in front of everyone, you know, and saying, you know what, you have no control over this and that. And this is what Musa did in front of everybody. He didn't waver. He didn't, you know, he didn't shake. He told their own the truth that there's only one Lord and whatever it is that you people are worshipping is all nonsense. It's all lies. It's all fake. Now... Fir'aun obviously knew it was fake because this is how he oppressed the people. He controlled them through fear and oppression. So what he did is he had fake scholars and fake magicians by his side to fool the people, to make the people submit to him. And this is similar to how we have today. We have ministers and scholars and experts in certain fields. They all come and they fool the people, the masses in the... The same way the king, you know, he needs all these people to fool him. And also the king has an army which does whatever he wills, subhanallah. And how do they fund all of this? They fund all of this by subjugating the people and making the people work their entire lives so that these people in the upper class can live comfortably. And this is basically worshipping the upper class, subhanallah. So now, as I'm saying all this, many people will already notice some similarities between the society of their own and our society. Brother Shamil, there is a lot of similarities. It is not a literal Musa and Fir'aun. The titles and have changed. The titles have changed, but yeah. the battle still continues. It's still the same battle that Isa alayhi salam came, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, and all other 124,000 MBA came to preach the same message, fight the same battle, and the same battle that will continue until the day of Qiyamah, inshallah. Hmm. Truth versus falsehood. The message of worshipping Allah alone versus, versus worshipping all these fake idols that people come up with. Yes. The, like you said, the illusions that are brought to fool the people. Hmm. Subhanallah. You know, um, in the battle, uh, Brother Shamil, between Fir'aun and Musa, Allah Azza wa Jal sent on the people of Fir'aun many signs. You know, I think it was locusts and uh, some plague and pandemics, famine. And uh, we've noticed, you know, a few years ago we had a drought here where we live and, you know, we also see famine and now we see plague and we've seen all these signs, similar signs. I mean, history seems to be repeating itself, you know. The scary thing is that history continuously repeats itself and mankind is stupid enough to fool himself and say that no, we shall not repeat the same mistakes twice. Hmm. When in actual fact we repeat the same exact same mistakes day in, day out. 
<laughs> we fool ourselves into believing that we are not making the same mistake. <laughs> and if you look at it, I mean, the way, like you said, the system is designed today is exactly the way it was back then. Exactly. There's absolutely no difference. If people it, are still being oppressed to keep the wealthy comfortable while the poor get poorer, you're still forced to live by certain rules, and if you don't, then an army comes upon you and throttles you. Subhanallah. Uh, just to raise, uh, build on the point of Brother Shemuel, you see, brothers and sisters, you see, it's just, the Quran is a miracle from Allah. 1,400 years ago, we've already talked about it in other podcasts. Allah tells us the story of Musa. Why? Why? The reason is because in our lifetimes, no matter what generation or era you're from, you're going to find similar situations. Similar, you know, what the people suffered then, we are going to find the same problem. And we're going to find the same solutions that they had was the same solutions that we should apply today. You know, Brother Shamil, today we see people, they build big, big towers and big buildings. But the people that actually build these buildings will never be able to afford to live there, you know, to be comfortable they, those same people have to go live in shacks or wherever it is they go live, you know. And also you see people that are working in restaurants, they're serving platters and platters of food to the wealthy and then they throw away the leftover food and then they go home on an empty stomach. SubhanAllah, this is, you know, the effect of modern day capitalism. But in the system of Fir'aun, I'm pretty sure they had the same thing, you know. The upper class would live a life of extravagance while the lower class, you know, they'd work the whole day building the pyramids for absolute no purpose. Similar like today, we build all these towers all over the world for absolutely zilch purpose. And then it's the same thing, subhanallah. Subhanallah. And you know, <clears throat> the, the sad thing is that we've become so indoctrinated into believing that the system is good for us, that we will defend it at any cost. The same system that has been designed to fundamentally corrupt has now become your ilah. Even though you might not acknowledge it, the way you live, everything about your life revolves around that ilah of the system. Mm. And it, now, you claim to be a Muslim, but are you just a Muslim by mm. And why is it that we can still, as Muslims, knowing that in the Quran, well, that is our guide, that is our light. Look, as a kafir, as a disbeliever, you have still that argument of, Ya Rabb, I was ignorant. So, in front of Allah, I mean, if you're ignorant, there's no harm done. But if you still had the knowledge, and you held on to the knowledge, and you didn't practice of the knowledge, then that makes you even worse than a kafir, because now you can't even play the card of your ignorance. Subhanallah. This is why, you see, the people of Fir'aun, they couldn't play the card that they never get the warnings and the signs. Allah gave them every single opportunity to return, but they didn't. Why? The reason for that is because, you see, when Islam comes, when the message of Tawheed comes, the message of the oneness of Allah, the people in power always, the leaders, the society kings and the ministers, the Azizas, you know, the people in power are always going to reject it. It happened with every single prophet, with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with Nu, with Shu'ayb, with Lut. The leaders always reject it. Why? The reason for that is because Islam takes away that power that they hold and it gives it to Allah Azza wa Jal. And it takes away the wealth that they hoard and distributes it to everybody. Subhanallah. This is why they hate it because Islam gives equality, justice, peace and the way it should be. And wallahi, people, people will think that, you know, this is only in the olden days. But even today, if Islam had to be applied the way it should, wallahi, the problems of the world would disappear because Islam takes us out from worshipping the creation to worshipping the creator. This is a message that uh, both me and Brother Shumil have been trying to get across for a long time and we hope that our listeners are listening out there will understand it. Brother Shumil, you know when we talk about this battle between Fir'aun and uh, <clears throat> Musa, we see even today, it's, you know, it's still a minority of people that are with, with the truth. Similarly with uh, Musa a.s., I'm pretty sure when he went to Bani Israel, like you say, many of them were so indoctrinated, they probably didn't even want to leave Fir'aun or challenge Fir'aun out of fear. And today we find again fear, fear is being used, the same emotion is being used to control the entire globe. You know, I'm glad you brought up that topic. <clears throat> because for the fact that 
not only were the Banu, Banu Israel indoctrinated by fear, they were also one of the few Ummah that were given to a prophet who would question everything that the Nabi said to them. Yeah, definitely. Def- very rude. They were very rude Ummah. They, they, were, they, they were vile in that sense that when a command came from Allah, they always had something to question about it. They, you know, always, they had an arrogance in it. And I feel that it's the same arrogance that they had that is alive in us today. Mm. That is destroying the Ummah. And I mean, Jahannam has a special place for those people who have arrogance. And it said something to this effect that a person with even an atom's worth of arrogance shall not enter Jannah. Hmm. So how great of a sin is it? And I mean, if you look at it, we, we are arrogant to many forms of the truth today. We accept some of it, yes, but we don't want to accept it in its entirety. We want to chop and change wherever we can to suit our lifestyle. But that's not the way the truth works. You either accept it as a whole or you don't accept it at all, which makes you a disbeliever. Definitely. Mm. Subhanallah. It, it's, it's very simple. There's no gray area when it comes to hot versus falsehood. I mean, even if you look at uh, the time of, of Firaun when he arranged the magicians in the area, they spared no expense. I mean, it was it was propagated across the entire of Egypt. People from every social class, every standard of life, as you said, even people from the Banu Israel were had come from far and wide to come and see. And I mean, Firaun had spared no expense. Even got the best of magicians at the time to come and perform. And I mean, if you look at it, that was the perfect opportunity. Musa alayhi salam didn't have to do anything. He had been given the perfect platform to now give his dawah to the people, with not even sparing, spending a single cent. And Simply by speaking hot. Hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up the stage for him and said, yeah, speak my truth. So hmm. we must understand that the light will always conquer darkness. It's amazing, Brother Shumul, you're raising this point because at this particular point of the story, right after what happens, what you've just said, the magicians, they, they, do their, they try to do their tricks. Everybody sees, wow. And then they see the reality, the truth of the dawah of Hazrat Musa, salam, and then they actually submit to Islam the same moment where one hour ago they were absolute kafirs. When they see the truth, they realize it. They get, they get so absorbed in the truth that they reject Fir'aun immediately and then they become Muslim in front of all these people. So the way Allah planned it out is, is all worked out as long as Musa A.S. remained, you know, with tawakkul in Allah, he got the reward at the end. Subhanallah, subhanallah. And I mean, even better than that, I, I've heard something, I've read something to this effect that the robes that those magicians wore is something similar to what the modern day kurta looks like. Hmm. Okay? And now because those people had submitted to Allah, like you said, not even an hour prior to that, they were in complete disbelief, but having been exposed to the truth, understand that they were the best in their practice. That they had that level of pride that they had a status to withhold. But instead, having been, sub- being subjected to the truth, they knew that we are in disbelief. We how can we disregard the truth so blatantly exposed in front of our eyes? And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created the kurta from that just to resonate back to that moment that they brought up in Allah. That they brought faith in Allah. You see, and that, and that is iman. You see, iman when it settles in your heart. Subhanallah, you don't fear anyone but Allah. And you see, these, these two magicians or whatever they were, you know, they never have to be have a lot of knowledge about Tawheed and everything, just a little bit, and then they submit it to Allah. Today, we have so much knowledge and everything, and yet we don't submit to Allah. You know, 
it's absolutely amazing, the story of Musa. And then Brother Shamil, just after this, Firon tells them, you know, the magicians, he tells them that, look, I'm going to execute you guys and I'm going to cut off your arms and your legs because you are, you know, you are conspiring, conspiring with Musa and obviously he must have called them a terrorist and everything like that. Eventually, the, 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 the magicians then tell Firon, you do what you have to do. You can only do what affects us in this world. You know, and we will return to Allah and then there's nothing that you can do that can affect us there. Subhanallah, Brother Shamil, look at this. Half an hour, one hour, and then they don't fear that that fear that they had for Fir'aun their whole life, you know, th- that power, that authority that they loved, everything they gave it all up for Allah in one second. Allah, 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 Allah. But this is the power of Haq. And you know, like you said, funny, you raised a, a point that I'd like to highlight is that you know, with all this information, we still look and falter and all of these things. And you know, Allah Ta'ala subhanahu, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala says so beautifully in Surah Kaf. Um, that we have revealed the Quran to them, a book full of knowledge. But man has always been one to argue and to dispute. Mm. I mean, if it's in the Quran that Allah is warning us that look, you are one to argue, but I have given you the Quran, a book complete with knowledge, with all the tools that you need. To love. Exactly, everything. It's there. Don't argue, just take from this tool. And you are complete, but still, no. Uh, we will we'll find loopholes and, you know, I find that, like, you know, we raise this point, right? Like, and uh, I know we're taking a little bit longer with this podcast, but I think this topic that you've raised has brought up so many things that relate to our modern day life is that, you know, it it's just would be like wrong to disregard some of these things. Is that when we were discussing about food that we eat, is that if you look across the Ummah, I don't know, personally, but as we said, as we discussed, is that when it comes to making Ibadah, we are somewhat lazy excuse me for lack of a better term for anything else we have all sorts of energy but when it comes to reading salah reading quran having talim in the family whatever there's always something something somehow that you know it, it just like you know doesn't happen or you know you do it half hearted and it comes back to the food that, that if we are not eating what is entirely halal surely there will be flaws in our ibadah. And yes, we have all of these halal organizations and whatever, but we need to actually question the process. I mean, being a farmer, I try and highlight this to a lot of people, is that you need to understand the process of where your food comes from. It's not that you just go to a shelf, pick it off the shelf, you see a stamp on your bismillah, fine, continue with your life. You need to actually question, where is it that this chicken came from? How was it? How did it come to be that it's now here on the shelf, certified for halal for me to consume? Is the entire process halal? What is happening throughout each step that may that may or may not make it halal, etc., etc.? Yes, there are the establishments and whatever, but surely, being human, they are also open and prone to error. Mm. So we need to also question, and that's why I always like to highlight. Like, need to learn how to grow their own food. Subhanallah. We are living for these times where we are warned in the Quran that without this mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy food, you will not be able to do anything. So we need to become self-sufficient. As Ummati is on the Alaihi Wasallam, that is going to have to hold on to this iman, even though it will become like holding on to a glowing coal. We need to equip ourselves for the battle that lies ahead. Because as we said in the beginning of this podcast, the battle between truth and falsehood will continue until the day of the See, um, brothers and sisters, just to wrap up on what Brother Shamil is saying about becoming self-sufficient, that actually is the conclusion of the battle between Musa and Fir'aun. Because what happens is, Allah didn't command Musa a.s. to continue living with Fir'aun and do da'wah and wait and make du'a and have sabr and, you know, just continue living under humiliation, defeatist attitude, just suffer patiently. No. Allah told Musa, Take the people of Bani Israel, 
go and make hijrah, you know, go and I will provide for you a way out. Subhanallah, they left everything behind in the middle of the night and they went. You know, they went to go become self-sufficient, independent, free from the tyranny of their own. This is exactly what Brother Shumi is saying. They wanted to live their own life, well, according to, you know, the Torah, you know. Anyways, they go to, they're going and they're traveling and I believe they come to the Red Sea and uh, the sea is in front of them. Obviously, Fir'aun now, he found out that they have uh, escaped or left Egypt, so he chases them with his army. Subhanallah, and this is like Brother Shumi is saying that we have to do our bit, we have to find out, you know, where our food is coming from. Similarly, Musa alayhi salam, now he's seeing Fir'aun is there behind him. The Bani Israel are obviously all panicking, all over thousands of people panicking, be like, oh my God, this guy, he brought us here, now he's going to get us all killed, the ocean is in front of us. Musa alayhi salam did not panic. He knew and he said, my Lord will guide me. So Allah azza wa jal gave him wahi to go to the ocean and take his staff and hit the ocean with it. Or, you know, like just smack the ocean with it. So now many mufassireen I've read, they say, why did Allah ask him to do this? Because Allah could have just told the ocean, open, you know, just open. Why must Musa now go and hit it and do this small task? The reason behind this, and many salafs say the reason behind it is that Allah wants us to, know, to show us that submission and to do your little your small action you do your small action and watch the consequences allah will take the consequences allah will open oceans for you you see one small action he just hit the ocean and the entire thing opened so brothers and sisters we have to do our small bit and wallahi allah will open for us our avenues and remove all this pharaohs and tyranny and oppression and like brother shamil said earlier we have to stick stick that step to become independent like the bani israel musa alayhi salam took them out of tyranny find a place and become independent muslims you know we don't have to live under tyranny under humiliation and defeaters you know brother show me this defeatist attitude in the ummah is, is very very sad and we have to move forward from this and we must look at the quran to take lessons and move forward oh, from no, this no. you know it's actually disgusting in fact that we have come to a point that we are content to the humiliation that we face i mean how is it that we sleep at night knowing that our mothers and our sisters are being raped globally and then our brothers and our children are being slaughtered hmm. i mean just the other night the 15 year old palestinian was shot uh, a 15 year old hmm. he, he hadn't even had the, the ability to understand the sniffle of what life is about and his life got cut hmm. but we don't bat an island but when the same government system that oppresses these people, that does all of these things to our people, that we submit. At the click of a finger, not even so much a click of a finger. Subhanallah. So, subhanallah, you know... You wake up, you will never wake up. You, Imam Mahdi will come and go, Isa alayhi salam will come and go and will still be in. Yeah. We can only make dua. We can only make dua. Subhanallah. Okay, brothers and sisters, this has been our one of our longest podcasts. And inshallah, I'm sure we will come again to the story of Musa many times. I hope that it's been beneficial for anyone out there that's listening. And I hope that Allah Azza records us as those that have spoken the truth and records us with the, you know, with the magicians of Musa, uh, of Fir'aun. You know, they submitted to Allah immediately. And subhanallah, we also wish to submit to Allah Azza wa Jal with our little knowledge, with our little ability, but we're trying our best to speak the truth, you know, in the face of tyranny. And obviously, like Fir'aun, people will ban, people will, you know, uh, hinder, will censor us. And this is part of the process. Inshallah, I mean, we hope with your support on the Ummah stands, we will continue speaking the truth. Brother Shumil, Jazakallah so much. And inshallah, we'll talk tomorrow. Inshallah, shukran. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum